there have been a lot of books about the beginning of the universe, but not that many about the end. My name is Katie Mack. I'm an assistant professor of physics at North Carolina State University, and I'm a cosmologist, which means I study the universe from beginning to end. I'm also the author of The End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking, which looks at several different possibilities for how the universe might come to an end. So we know that the universe is expanding. We've known that for a long time. Distant galaxies are moving away from us, and all galaxies that are far enough apart seem to be moving away from each other. And the only really reasonable explanation for that is that the whole universe is getting bigger. The spaces between things are getting bigger. But in our usual understanding of that, it's just the empty space in between that's expanding. The galaxy itself is not getting bigger. The Earth is not getting bigger. It's the, it's the empty space in between. And we think that's due to something we call dark energy. We don't really know what dark energy is, but our best guess is that it's a cosmological constant, which means it's a basic property of space-time where there's just this kind of inherent stretchiness in space. And so when you have more space, you have more stretching, and it's making the universe expand faster and faster. But there are some other possibilities for what dark energy is, and some of them are a little bit scarier. There's one called phantom dark energy, where instead of just being a sort of property of space that's constant all the time, dark energy is something dynamical, something that changes over time in a way that would make it so that there's more dark energy over time, that space is not only expanding in between everything, but starts expanding within objects, within galaxies, within solar systems. And if that's true, that leads us to a really scary conclusion, which is that the universe would be heading for what we call a big rip. What that means is that over a sufficient period of time, the universe would start stretching out so much that it would ultimately pull itself apart. And you can calculate, based on what we currently know about the expansion rate, what the earliest that would be, that final big rip end of the universe. And we think it's somewhere around 200 billion years. But probably it's not going to happen. But if it did, then what you would see is you'd first see galaxy clusters coming apart. That would be in sort of the last two billion years or so of the cosmos. And then you'd start to destroy uh, galaxies. Galaxies would start to pull apart as the dark energy within them pulls on them from the inside. Stars would start to wander away from galaxies. That would be in about 140 million years before the very, very end. And then just a few months before the end, you would get the solar system coming apart. Planets would wander off away from the sun. And then it gets really personal at that point because then even planets can't hold together anymore. There's so much stretching of space that you would start to explode planets. And about an hour before the end, the Earth itself would explode. And then just tiny fractions of a second before that, before the end, atoms themselves would be ripped apart. And then the whole universe would be, in some sense, torn asunder. We don't really know what that would look like, but we know that it would be uh, catastrophic for any structures in the cosmos. Uh, I think we are always fascinated by big, scary things we can't control. I think that it is, it is a frightening concept that we live in a universe uh, with forces so much larger and more powerful than we are. And we want to try to understand those a little bit, try to get some handle on where we are. Maybe, you know, it can change your perspective a little bit to have that moment to think about a much bigger picture and to put ourselves in a different context as creatures in this larger cosmos. I'm, I'm just so fascinated by the universe. I want to tell everybody I know, and not everybody I know is a physicist. So this book is really for you, no matter who you are.